All right, so I could describe the main event in about 20 seconds max, I think, but they tried it out for a long time. It's the Kevin Owens show with Steve Austin. Owens comes out. He runs down Texas. He runs down Austin. He says, I'm not going to ring him out till I want to, but the glass shatters. Austin comes out. I, I, I don't want to alarm you. He was quite popular here in Dallas, Texas. Uh, he drives his wacky go-kart down to the ring. It's a four-wheeler. Why do we keep calling it a go-kart? Because <laughs> go-kart's funnier. <laughs> All right, fine. So they're sitting there, and, and, and Owens convinced him to to chat for a few minutes. And they get a close-up. And I, know, I, I people, I maybe I'm going to be one, but Steve Austin is sitting there. I know he has been bald with a goatee for decades now, but I thought that man, he looks 19 years older. <laughs> he's, he's been through some stuff. So eventually, he has, but for a 58 year old guy, he looked great. Yeah. So eventually, Owen says, The secret is I didn't come invite you here to chat. I invited you to challenge you to a no holds barred match. No, Austin says, Fine. And I was very much expecting the bell to ring. Austin would duck a clothesline, hit the kick, and the stunner and pin him. Yep. That is not what happened. <laughs> no. And you know, it's funny too because they announced the fake attendance and, uh, you know, they sold uh, about 53, 54,000 tickets for this show here. And I thought, you know what? If they would have announced that Stone Cold Steve Austin is wrestling Kevin Owens in a no-holds-barred match, it's going to be his retirement match in Texas after 19 yeah. years of not wrestling, they probably would have actually done the number that they claimed. Do you know? Well, that too. They, they could have sold 200,000 tickets for that match. Well, I don't know about that. But, but it, it, how much better this show would have been if they just did the promo on Raw and just had the match here, yeah, because this show did, you know, I, I honestly a promo and a surprise fifteen minute match. I I actually believe that Steve Austin probably decided exactly what he was going to do like today or yesterday. That is that's possible because you know he he does not he he would not have wanted to go out here and have a bad last match, and so I'm sure he trained and he trained and he trained and he trained and he was like. I'm going to see how I feel the weekend of WrestleMania. And if I feel like I can do it, then we'll fucking do an impromptu match. And if I don't, it's just going to be, you know, a little bit of a brawl, boot stun or whatever. But man, this guy was feeling it because he went out there and the first five minutes of this match, you know, normally you warm up in the back and then you go down to the ring and you wrestle. But that wasn't happening here. He was going down to sit in a chair and talk for 10 minutes. So there was no warm-up time, really. So yeah. the first few minutes of this match was his warm-up. And it started It started slow. Couple of boots, then some quicker boots. Couple of boots in the corner, quicker boots. And he starts getting a little more warmed up. And then he gets thrown into the post. And he kind of does the old sit-down bump where you don't really take a bump, but you just like hit the post and you sit down and fall back. And uh, and then he sends uh, Kevin Owens through the table. Oh, Kevin Owens taking all the bumps. Austin's yeah, not doing anything. Yeah, 100% of the bumps, yes. Yep. And then finally, you know, Austin throws him over the barricade. They start brawling in the crowd. And I thought, hey, you know, waste some time crowd brawling. It's easy. Just, you know, punch each other or whatever. All of a sudden, Kevin Owens hooks this fucking guy outside. Not on like, you know, some pad. On the fucking cement. And he gives Steve Austin a vertical suplex on the cement. And it was fucking on at that point. <laughs> now Austin's like, he's taking bumps. He's giving this dude suplexes on the ramp. Like, he was working. And, you know, by the end, this was a good match. Mm -hmm. This was a good match from a 58-year-old guy that hasn't wrestled in 19 years. And by the way, his last match, you can read about his last match and in the hospital the night before. And yep. You know, all that shit, and then, you they know... They did their own documentary on it at one point. Yep, told, don't ever wrestle again, your neck is fucked, blah, 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 blah. Here he is, 19 years later, and he had a good match in the main event of WrestleMania that he can be proud of, and yep. Kevin Owens, should he should retire tomorrow. Oh, Owens, Owens is never top I this, mean, yes. my God. <laughs> this was like, it was so great, and he wins, and then he gets the beer, and then he stuns Kevin, and he drinks more beer, and then he's... Stuns that Byron Saxton, thank God. Drinks some more beer. Everyone's going crazy. They're all happy. He's waving everybody. Fuck, this was so great. This was an awesome end to this WrestleMania. It ended with Austin celebrating with his brother, and I legit thought the brother was doomed. Oh, man, I thought for sure he was stunning <laughs> yeah. his brother. Yeah. I, was, I was certain. Imagine you're Stone Cold Steve Austin's brother. It's been 30 years. We say, man, it's just one time I'd love to take one of them stunners from you, right? 
It, maybe he has in the backyard or something. But So I was watching Austin very carefully here to see exactly what he did. He took that massive suplex on the cement, which is a, that, that's a grown man bump, don't get me wrong. He delivered a pair of suplexes on the stage. Other than that, I don't, I don't think he took any real bumps. He didn't take any bumps in the ring. 90% of the match was outside the ring anyway. Yeah. All of his bumps were outside the ring. On hard things. Yes. yes. Not on the mat. Um, he never ran. Not one time. They did one bit where he was whipped in the barricade for, at very close range. And he took about six steps to go six feet. And then immediately just bounced off the barricade and clotheslined Owens inside out. So the point of being, he took the stuff he couldn't do and didn't do it. And even after he got warmed up, it was still... This was not... This is a very, very good main event brawl. It was not a 1999 Stone Cold Steve Austin wild out of control brawl. Um, but they did what they needed to do. The crowd absolutely loved it. They got back of the ring. He didn't get blown up. He, he was never, in, he never got he blown was up. in not great one time. shape. Yes, he, he, he looked great well. after he the was, match. Yes. Probably went in the back and regretted his last match. <laughs> this guy could Pretty do this bad. regularly. Yes, yes. Owens hits the stunner, gets a two count out of it. Owens knew those that was his last best shot. He goes to grab the chair and does the best Kurt Angle chair spot since Kurt Angle, where he swings, misses a hit, hits the ropes, bounces himself in the face, and Austin hits a stutter and wins, and the place goes crazy. And then the post match Brian already all talked about. So on the uh, uh, like as a wrestling match, it was a good match. It was three stars or three and a quarter stars. Nostalgia scale three hundred sixteen stars. Wow. That's a lot of stars. That is. I that don't is. know what kind of rating system you're using. We do our own system. My own. Uh, <laughs> I gave a match a million stars a little while ago. Wow, what match? Yeah, which one was that? There have been a few like that. Uh, it was Danielson and... Uh, the, oh, Danielson and Moxley versus Moxley. Yeah. A million? It was about a million stars. A million stars? All right, fine. Yeah. Okay. Fucking the... the seems like a lot. Brian Danielson-Wheeler-Uta match on Wednesday was about uh, 10 stars. Huh. Holy shit, that was awesome. Does Uncle Dave know about it's your story been that you're using? Subjective, brother. We do what the, we want. This whole weekend has reminded me how great pro wrestling actually is and can be and how much fun it is and how you should like seek out the wrestling you like and watch it as often as you can. There is so much great pro wrestling in the world. Go watch it, please. Yeah, but the problem is there's too much of it. Well, tomorrow, Vinny could go awfully wrong and you'll be regretting saying that. You know, maybe you we'll see. Like, it's really fucking terrible. You know what I really liked about this, Brian? Vinny? What'd you really Both like you? about it? You know what I really liked about it? What? That Brian and Uncle Dave didn't know it was going to happen, so it didn't get fucking spoiled for me. Actually, so, we, we, we said like exactly it. how it was going to go, which was Austin's going to decide if it's going to be a match or not. Well, I, li I like Mark came on the show to bury our, his, this website. <laughs> Yeah, that's his gimmick. It's all love. It's it comes from a place of love. It's not though. It's hate. No, it's, no. You I hate, it, no hate in this You heart. hate it when Brian and Dave spoil things. <laughs> I do. Well, then but don't I, fucking listen. I, that's hate. I, I'm not fucking forcing you to put the goddamn headphones on. I don't on. listen. I just see things yeah, on the internet. Well, get off the internet, dude. Uh, go go touch grass, brother. The dramatic reading of the Hulk Hogan Brutus Beefcake promo. Please welcome the Mega Maniacs, Brutus the Barber Beefcake. And Hulk Hogan. Well, you know something, Mean Gene? Now more than ever, with just one week away, I'm aware of how destiny is going to take its course, brother. Because just a few short weeks ago, bro, when I was laying in the weeds at Venice Beach, California, and I had Monday Night Raw tuned in, I saw Money Incorporated run across the ring with a metal attache case with the speed of a lightning bolt. And as it crashed into Brutus, the bionic barber beefcake, Blood Brothers' face, I saw what I didn't want to see. I heard what I didn't want to hear. The emotions ran from head to toe. I chilled. I goosebumped. And I broke a sweat as I stood up, man. And I rushed from head to toe. I spent two days running up and down the aisles of Kmart, picking up that tonic, getting all that hair color together, and getting ready to do a number on Money Incorporated. I was sniffing for the hair tonic. I was sniffing for the butch wax. And lo and behold, as I kicked down the door of the Ramada Indoor at 48th and 8th Avenue, just a bit north of the Mid-City Gym, I found the brother, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, 
with his feet propped up on an ottoman, laid back in a lazy boy, watching Mo, Larry, and Curly with an ice pack on his nose. Thank God for the man upstairs that Brutus the Barber is okay. So I took to the desert outside Las Vegas, chopping down some big nasty-looking cactuses, trying to dull up the titanium steel blades, chopped down a couple of small mountains, and then it came to me, brother. I knew that I'd just throw the scissors away because I'm just going to yank the hair right out of their heads. So Las Vegas, Nevada, and the whole wide world, what are you going to do when the mega maniacs run wild on you? The Hulkster, Hulk Hogan, and Brutus the Barber Beefcake, and Mouth of the South Jimmy Hart, the Mega Maniacs, perhaps the next tag team champions of the World Wrestling Federation. The Hulkster has never looked better live and in mint condition. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.